When I was a small child, as opposed to the big kid you see in front of you today, I was given this driving game one Christmas. And I had fun with it for about a week or two. And then I decided to really have a good time with it. One of the benefits of having a father who's an engineer is access to tools. So I went down to the basement, grabbed some tools, and proceeded to completely dismantle this electronic toy. Every screw was unscrewed, every piece separated from its mate, until this thing was completely apart. I had wanted to know how this device worked, and boy did I know on the most intimate of levels. With my newfound knowledge, I would have been content to have just left it in pieces. But alas, I feared that just weeks after Christmas, a Christmas toy dismantled all over the floor would bring on some kind of a Santa wrap. I knew I had to put it back together. But now that I understood how it worked, why just put it back together? Why not make it better? So I broke off a couple plastic pieces here or there, switched around a couple wires, and my newly updated game had a steering wheel with a wider range of motion, and I could now control the speed of the treadmill that had the imprint of the cars that I was supposed to avoid. I hadn't gone searching for science, but science found me, even at that young age. Science is this drive to understand how things around you work. Once you have a better understanding, it seems almost the human condition to want to improve things, to improve technology, to improve the world, to improve the quality of life. Years later, when I was in fourth grade, I was introduced to skateboarding and punk rock by a friend's college-aged older brother. Those two things changed my life forever. Every once in a while, I'd find a skateboard magazine in a grocery store. This was before the internet. This was before YouTube, where you can look up a how-to of just about anything you can think of. Man, this was even before I had met anybody that owned a VCR. All I had were these skateboard magazines. So I'd look at these pictures. A guy mid-air, best case scenario. I'd have a series of pictures depicting somebody getting airborne without the use of a launch ramp. So I'd study these pictures. I'd get a foot placement from one, I'd get a tail tap from another, and I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced until I learned how to ollie. And that was great for about a minute. Then it quickly turned into, how high could I ollie? What could I ollie over? What could I ollie off of? Here I am 30 years later. I'm still figuring out what I can ollie up onto and slide down. I'm still figuring out which way I can spin my board once it's in the air. Scientists and skateboarders have this fire inside that drives us to figure things out. Yet once we do, we're never satisfied. 
every accomplishment just shows us how much more there is to know, how much more there is to learn, how much more there is to be done. This fire in both skateboarders and scientists makes us figure things out so that we can do things that nobody has ever done before. Now this drive to progress yourself has always been met with tension from the status quo. When I'm getting harassed and kicked out of a skate spot by some meathead security guard, I find myself thinking about Copernicus. Copernicus was discussing how the Earth is not the center of the universe, but that the Earth, in fact, orbits around the sun. Now that's punk. To stand up against the government, the church, the common beliefs of the time? I find myself thinking about Kelvin, with this pretty nice beard. Kelvin was discussing that the age of the Earth should be measured in millions of years, not thousands of years. This was something that was very disturbing to many, the idea that the Earth could be this old. We now know it to be even older, at just over four and a half billion years old. To go against the idea of the status quo, this was incredibly crucial to our early understandings of the planet that we live on. This was planetary punk. I find myself thinking of Darwin. Another nice beard. Not a bad haircut either. Darwin was making discoveries and making realizations about the very nature of life that were so controversial, not just to society, but to his own personal religious beliefs. To study things, to come to conclusions that address these ideas and ideals that are at the very core of your existence, now that's punk. And that's been shaking things up to this day. Punk is not limited to a shaved head and a flight jacket. Nor is it limited to liberty spikes and plaid riot pants. Punk is the sincere and uncompromising drive to stay true. To sincerely be yourself and to uncompromisingly pursue the truth. Once you've had a small taste of this, you'll never be able to settle for anything else. This is a road traveled by few. It requires a thickness of skin and a strength of will. It's a noble pursuit, but if it was easy, everyone would be true. Once you've started this exploration, the what-ifs never stop. What if I transfer this gap on my skateboard? What if I take two particles, accelerate them at high speeds so that they have a head-on collision? What if I step off this round carpet red? To start your own business, in my case, a skateboard and snowboard shop, is scary. To huck yourself down a flight of stairs on a skateboard is scary. To sit in a lab for hours and hours on end, hoping that you discover something, but knowing that you may come up with nothing, is scary. The fact that right now, Scientists all over the planet 
are receiving death threats because the work that they are doing is further supporting our knowledge that the activity of human beings is changing our climate. That is incredibly scary. The world needs more people who are willing to figure out how things work. The world needs more people who want to do things that have never been done before. The world needs more punk science. Thank you.